What it do, guys? It's your boy Dream Team Neil. And your boy Darn. We back with another video. Guys, we had this one recommended to us. We got the most feared and legendary referee of all time. I never knew a referee that you just feared like that, you know? I'm my mama. <laughs> like that, that, that's different, you know? You have a referee that you fear. So they must be laying people out, man. Come on now, come on. I don't know what he's doing, but <laughs> we finna check this out. Y'all hit that subscribe button. Send down those recommendations. To become a legend inside those four white lines is no easy task. Most had to fight for the ball because that's where the spotlight shines. Defenders had to perform thousands of clean tackles, keepers dozens of unimaginable saves, strikers had to provide a never-ending supply of goals. But there was one man who became a legend in one of the like Elmer Fudd. faces in the sport, <laughs> ever touching the ball. So they were gonna find out how exactly one becomes the most like weird, rabbit most respected, and by far the most legendary referee in the world, even making the cover of Pro Evolution Soccer. Our what? One becomes I no way. Carolina. Watching like, Colina go about his job was <laughs> as impressive as watching any other like, superstar. He, he different if he on the cover. That's like Madden used to put John Madden on that thing before they I start swear to God. They start selling more and they start putting the players. <laughs> <laughs> Stars he shared the pitch with. It wasn't just oh, that he seemed to never get a decision wrong. With the sight of a falcon and cold-headed as they got, it was the way he handled the players. He was capable of telling off anyone. Even a maniac like Oliver Kahn bowed down to him like a newborn puppy being reprimanded for munching down on your favorite pair of slippers. <laughs> but in fact, over time, he didn't even need to do any of that. So much was the respect for him that the players already knew not to mess around when he was watching. After all, with that deep blue stare aimed right at you, it's hard not to feel intimidated. <laughs> But don't get me wrong, Colina wasn't just a mindless tough guy of any sort. He was a diplomat. The players loved to chat around with him and on the toughest of moments, he was even capable of showing off his more tender side, helping out the players whenever they needed. He really was the best of both worlds. <laughs> but how did he get there? As you might imagine, Colina wasn't actively looking for this job. Despite his passion for basketball, just like many other referees, he was trying to make it as a football player first. But Colina was realistic. He knew that the chances were slim, especially as he never found himself to be the most <laughs> talented. At first, he just made sure to cover his bases, continually working hard in school, where he actually got taught by nuns. And then he even took a step back, quite literally, actually. He began playing as a center back as he found he had the best chances of making it in that position since not many kids are willing to play there and it requires a different set of skills. But have you ever asked yourself what team a referee supports or if they're even allowed to? Well, as a teenager, Colina followed two teams, whoever Walter Zenga played for and Lazio. Though at first he was a Bologna fan, as he grew up he fell in love with a team known as the Lazio Pistols, which demands a quick intermission. You see, this team was as scary as it gets. No wonder Colina loved them so much. Let me give you a quick summary. So, pretty much two main figures of the dressing room get into an argument and things get so bad that the team was divided into two factions, depending on which player they Dang. sided with. They grew apart so much that they even had different locker rooms. The tensions began rising so fast that players began carrying pistols everywhere to protect themselves from what? the other players. <laughs> they were pretty much like a gang. You hear that 100% right. The crazy thing oh is God. that when it came to the actual matches, they blended seamlessly and displayed some great football, even going on to somehow win the league. That's wild. You a team and you over here carrying a uh, pistol and stuff to protect yourself from your teammate? From your teammates, bro. <laughs> Pistols, bro, like guns. Come on, now. Wait, it's like in the, the parking of... lot, like, you remember you ain't passed me the ball? That's your, <laughs> la that's your last time. <laughs> last time. Wait till we get in the locker room. You want to see You will wait. You will wait. You're like, you know what, coach? I'm going to change in the car, man. I'll see y'all tomorrow. I swear to God. <laughs> the club. Despite the fact that back in the locker room, players were literally threatening each other's lives with broken glass bottles. This is easily 
Crazy. One of the craziest stories I've ever heard. Comment down below <laughs> if you think I should make a video on it. Jeez. But yeah, back to Colina. Despite his known passion for Lazio, he has made sure to say in an interview that it never influenced his decision. So much so that Lazio never won in the first 10 of their matches he officiated. Dang. At 17 years of age, things were not looking very promising when he came to his footballing career. And that's when an interesting offer arose. It was suggested to him that maybe he should take part in a refereeing course. And very quickly, everyone was surprised at his natural talents. Colina already displayed every bit of the charisma he has gotten us used to. Over the next few years, his life was a mess. Imagine the stress he must have gone through. Colina was 20 when he finally got to officiate his first few regional matches. But meanwhile, he was also completing his degree in economics and completing his mandatory military service, which further developed his sense of authority and discipline. After all, growing up with a mother who was a teacher, a dad who worked in the Ministry of Defense, and being taught by nuns in primary school wasn't enough, right? Among all of this, he rapidly got promoted to the Italian 3rd Division. It was impressive mm. how fast he was progressing in his career. Yeah, man, oh, yeah. Commercials and already, everything. But then, he had to go to one of the toughest moments in his life. <laughs> As he was about to finish his service, Colina developed a form of alopecia, and after only 10 days, he had Dang. lost every bit of air in his body. Jeez. To make matters worse, this came about around the same time the Italian Federation planned to move him up to Serie A and Serie B. There was some worry that the disease would affect his confidence and that he wouldn't be able to perform as he used to, but Colina is different. If it affected his self-esteem in any way, he surely made it so no one would be aware. To the audience, especially looking back now, he seemed like a Dragon Ball character who had just reached his <laughs> final form. Standing at six foot two, Paulina was as imposing as the most six foot two Krillin. Has, but now bald, That's... it seemed his deep blue eyes were more piercing than ever, and his new look also earned him his nickname Kojak, like Kojak. the bald detective from the TV show of the same name, which, given his love for pistol whipping footballers, I'm sure Kalina appreciated. <laughs> Four years later, in 1995, after having refereed only 43 top-flight matches in Italy, Colina was put on FIFA's referees list. Once again, the rapid pace at which he progressed through his career was frightening. It was like the Erling Haaland of referees. Even more impressively, he was immediately allocated to five matches in the 1966 Olympics, nice. including the final between Nigeria and Argentina an absolute classic of African football where Akosha and Kanu led their team as they went behind twice and still managed to win it <laughs> on injury time. Following this, hey. Colina took part in the 1998 World Cup where, despite not getting to officiate the final, he left a mark, sending off Clivert in a heated group stage match against Belgium. If that time he didn't get to be in the final, the next year it was a whole different story. After numerous great performances in the Champions League, and after being awarded the IFFHS Referee of the Year Award in 1998, Colina was selected for the 1999 UCL Final. I didn't even know they gave that award for his first call up by FIFA. That's what I'm saying. What was the secret of his success? Well, besides his demeanor, he was also fluent in different languages, being able to communicate with any player with ease, which allowed him to more easily empathize with them. But above all, what set him apart was his preparation for the matches. He took it all a step further. He would study the formations and styles of play, assessing which players were most likely to clash during the game. He gathered information on which players are most likely to fake injuries, dive, or get physical with others. His philosophy is that referee can't be caught off guard. You have to know when and how the players will act before they do. It was with this philosophy that he helped UEFA reduce the number of yellow cards shown in their tournaments. In a way, he set the foundation for modern refereeing. Sound like he could have been a coach and everything, too. Boy, it he sound, sound like, he like the, game. the definition of stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the 1999 I wouldn't be surprised UCL if he coached. Final. This I match is uh, on everyone. Easily one of the most dramatic UCL finals of all time. The coach Bayern K is United in five minutes <laughs> in, Bayern went in front. The lead lasted all the way to injury time, but then, somehow, United struck twice in quick succession, snatching the trophy from Bayern when they were convinced it was already theirs. If the shears from United players were what marked most people, Colina had to deal with both sides of the match. As Dang. he told it himself, the United players were running like madmen all over the pitch, but then I turned around and found that most Bayern players were crying and laying down Dang. on the floor, hopeless. 
I saw Samuel Kufur completely distraught. I went hey, up to him and I couldn't tough. think of what that's to tough. say besides get up and oh, keep everything. fighting. There's still 20 seconds left on the clock. Mm. Football is a cruel hey. sport. Its unpredictability makes it seem like at times it takes away what was already yours. Kufur feels exactly that way. After all these years, he still tells the press that he hasn't looked at any of the footage from that game, saying, Dang. it still hurts to think of it. I have to let it go, but it's still haunting me to this day. <laughs> On the other hand, Kalina had to walk through what seemed like a battlefield, picking up the ones left wounded. No player was left in phase. Even the great Khan, the one of the few left standing, was found with a stare of someone wishing to go back in time. Kalina would recall this moment saying, that day, I saw the true face of football, where all players give their lives for it, but only half get rewarded with people shouting mm. their names mm. in joy, and the rest lay down, hurting to their core. Mm -hmm. That's really dark. <laughs> Over the next three years, Colina <laughs> took part in the Euro 2000 and was bound to take center stage at the 2002 World Cup. Along the way, he grew more and more in notoriety and racked up three more awards for IFFA Jazz Referee of the Year. At the World Dang. Cup, he officiated three <laughs> matches, two of them being purposely picked for him due to the difficulty involved. The first mm. of which was England versus Argentina. Ever since 1986, with Maradona scoring the infamous end of God during the Falklands War between both countries, relationships yeah, had been tense. And it only got worse as in the previous World Cup, the deciding moment came with David Beckham sending off after a foul on Diego Simeone. If once the fans' anger was directed at each other, a share of it was now for the referee, but Colina was having none of it. And finally, the <laughs> match went by smoothly, with England taking the win and sending Argentina out of the tournament. The second of those matches was, of course, the final between Brazil and Germany. But first, some background. Colina had an odd relationship with Oliver Kahn. Having to order around a man like their Titan wasn't easy, especially when he lost. So the fact that Colina managed to maintain a relationship with him that was based on the utmost respect for his authority became even more impressive when it started being noticed that Kahn would always lose whenever Colina officiated his matches. <laughs> From the UCL final to the Euro... That sounds like how the NBA finals were. <laughs> was that uh, oh. Scott Fisher or Scott? I forgot it. Um, I know you. I know what you're talking about. Every time he officiated, the Celtics was like 13 and 0. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. It is. It's crazy. Hey, isn't that suspicious? A little bit. Coincidence. I was. I saw people be trying to throw that. In. I mean, these refs were gambling back in the day. <laughs> hey, bro, I, I can call it right now. But, but. I swear to God, I swear to God. Whenever Colino officiated these matches. From the UCL final to the Euros and even a 5-1 to demolition by England in the qualifying stages, the link had been settled, and Khan was aware of it. Before the match, he was asked about Colina and famously said, He is a world-class referee, there is no doubt about that. But does he bring me any luck? Clearly not. <laughs> and this time it wouldn't be any different. Two goals by Ronaldo in quick succession would send Khan home without any silverware. Uh, As Colina kept crossing off every big game from his bucket list, the next one in line was the UEFA Cup final. This was easily the big game he influenced the most, having to show Fabian Barthez a red card and giving away a penalty right before halftime, uh, opening the way for Valencia's eventual 2-1 win. Over the summer, he took part in the Euros yet again, but didn't get awarded with a chance to officiate the final. And with FIFA's referee age limit coming the following year, he was destined mm, to never cross dang. the Euro final from his list. But then came a moment that proved just how legendary it truly really was. So much was his popularity that the Italian Federation raised their own age limit to allow for Colina to keep on officiating for an extra year. Dang. However, oh. it all came crashing down soon in an unfortunate manner. Colina had signed a sponsorship deal with Opel, and given they were also the sponsors what? of AC Milan, the whole thing was seen as a conflict of interest, and the Federation decided he wasn't allowed to referee any top flight matches as long as this deal was still on. So, Colina filed in his resignation letter, and then the Federation tried rejecting it, but what could they do? Colina just pretended like nothing happened and carried on with his retirement, which might be the biggest power move ever. Right. <laughs> it was yet to come. In 2006, he still managed to make headlines for his integrity. 
the biggest scandal in Italian football history came to light, known as the Calciopoli scandal, where referees were paid to fix matches for mm. all sorts of reasons. At the center of the whole thing was a man named Luciano Moggi, who, by the way, definitely deserves a video as well. This man nearly destroyed the Serie A with his schemes. What do you guys Dang. think? Should I should I do it? <laughs> Regardless, <laughs> right. his calls leaked them near every referee. I know I heard the ones that did the NBA. There was one on TikTok I seen. They say he did prison time. He had got out of prison. Oh, everything. That's, uh, that's wild. Yeah. It ain't worth it, man. Regardless, once his calls leaked, them near every referee in the league could be heard taking bribes and favors from him. But guess who stood his ground rejecting everything they threw at him no matter the amount? Pierluigi Colina. This incredible man was always picked to referee the biggest matches in the league, and he still remained honest through all this corruption, which infuriated Moji, so much so that he could be heard in a call saying that he was going to punish Colina for his decisions against Juventus. Hey. I think we all know what that means. But of course, this absolute madman stayed completely unfazed and kept on being 100% unbiased. If only they were all like Colina. After all, he is a six-time IFFHS Referee of the Year winner, two times more than anyone else. A member of the Italian Football Hall of Fame and to this day, the only referee ever to swap a shirt with a player, being David Beckham's number seven shirt oh at the request God. of Sir Alex Ferguson. So yeah, this was Pierluigi Colinas. Yeah, my guy was definitely different. Definitely different. Oh, everything. You need you know, sponsorship deals as a ref? Come on now, Dean. I ain't never heard of it. Ever. Never, never seen it for sure. I swear like, to God. I, that's wild. But hey, he a legend. He a legend. He had to turn. Good thing he did turn him down. But they out here doing time for that crime. <laughs> for real, for real. But no, that was pretty dope, though. We appreciate you guys for sending us that recommendation. Y'all make sure y'all send us some more recommendations. Hit that subscribe button. That's all we have. We out of here.